So hello, my name is Nicolas Massa. Uh, first, I would, like you to, I would like to thank you all for being here today. I'm a developer at Pegasus. I work on the documentation team. Pegasus, as you may know, is a startup made possible by Consensus, one of the most important Ethereum blockchain company. Pegasus, that I'm proud to represent today, focuses on the protocol work where um, we lead, uh, we'll lead product is Pantheon. It's an enterprise grade Java Ethereum client that we developed from scratch, in fact. I'm a developer at Pegasus and I'm proud to work in the documentation team. Uh, documentation needs developers because apart from the UX development that I'm mainly, mainly related to, the command line interface of Pantheon ID, uh, I also provide the documentation tools for technical writers and I act as an interpreter between them and Pantheon code. Our documentation team is nicknamed Pliny to make reference to the Roman writer Pliny the Elder who wrote about the first Roman Pantheon in his book Naturalis Historia and also I admit a bit to show off and look smarter than other teams. So, as Pliny wrote, and I'm just quoting Naturalist Historia, Pantheon is a masterpiece of excellence, but it has not had an opportunity of being so well appreciated yet. We are fixing this. A good documentation is one of the ways to achieve this goal of excellence. So, let me tell you how we started this journey to excellence. In fact, I started uh, it in July 18 alone with an already impressive code base to explore. You may have heard of Gaia's spacecraft from the European Space Agency that was launched in 2013. This spacecraft was designed to measure our galaxy, the Milky Way, as precisely as possible. Distances of stars, spectral and photometric measurement velocities, it measured about one billion stars. All this huge quantity of data was used to graph a 3D image of our galaxy and for the first time ever, we were really, really and precisely knowing its shape. Everything before that was artist views. Now, it's real precise data. I felt a bit like Gaia in Jolly, alone in the void of space with billions of stars to explore. But our journey is not going to the outer space. Even if Consensus recently started some very interesting space activities, in July 2018, we are still on Earth. And given the real weather and crypto weather, I decided to set our story in the cold land of the North. We were on Earth reading the source code of Pantheon and a lot of Ethereum-related documentation. The fact is that even when you think you know a lot about Ethereum, and you do if you are able to prepare this expedition, and you even watch the crypto winner coming with some confidence, but you still you know nothing before working on a project like that. I admit that I had to ask a lot of questions to the developers that were out working on Pantheon and they answered nicely, thanks to them. At this stage of the process, I was diligently assimilating knowledge, preparing the trip. So a few weeks later, two technical writers joined the expedition. I think of us as explorers and cartographers on a new unknown land. We drew maps for others to be able to settle a new world of the Ethereum blockchain. We drew maps of the Terra Incognita for users to land on set up businesses quickly and as safely as possible. We drew maps to locate our weaknesses and know the places where we can expand and improve. We drew maps for others ex other explorers to initiate their expeditions and help us draw more maps. Then we continued to prepare by sharing our findings and writing them down into a basic documentation. But at this stage, our first 
issue to start exploring if that we needed better tools. The project contained already some markdown files. I hope everyone knows markdown. It was mainly a readme file in the root folder of the project. We needed to move to something more user-friendly and that will enable us to collaborate faster, at least on the beginning. Our project being hosted on GitHub, we naturally decided to move to the GitHub wiki. It provided some advantages like ease of use, possibility of a table of content on the side of the page, restricting the editing rights to the team and some more, but it also came with its batch of issues. After a few months where our focus was clearly on the content itself, we decided to rework our documentation and make a mi migration. We saw two ways of better tooling our documentation work. The first one was to move to a hosted service. We knew about read the doc Dot org, but also that GitHub was providing GitHub pages, even if we were not able to tell exactly what each service was doing. We also had the possibility to self-host our documentation and generate it using a tool like Metal Smith that we had off. But we had no idea about what was the best choice. To make an informed decision, we listed requirements and followed a simplified approval process. The tool we wanted to add to, to satisfy multiple uh, capabilities had to first be able to use markdown syntax. After a poll we made among developers uh, to know if RST uh, was something they would accept to use, markdown was clearly the only way to have their approval. It may be different in other companies, but here it was the case. The system also had to be able to manage documentation versions based on release type that were used in the code repository. The best solution being to have an automated build of the doc when publishing a new release of Parfion. One of my biggest concerns with the GitHub Wiki was that the code and doc were not in sync. I mean that when you use GitHub Wiki, you don't have a way to go back to a version of the code in the git log and tell exactly what version of the doc, of the doc can apply. There are two separated repositories. We also needed the new tools to enable reviews like code reviews on pull requests with comments but for the doc. With the wiki we missed this ability to create a pull request, review it and fix it before merging in the master branch. Everything we pushed was directly available for the public. And so we used the ugliest way we could imagine to review docs. During a few weeks, using Google Documents, we created drafts of the wiki pages on which we were able to comment, ask developers for reviews, and then copy, and then paste in the wiki, and then reformat to markdown. Well, I, I try to forget this moment, but it's hard to remove it from my mind, and I still feel the taste of that. But Hopefully I knew we were going to change this soon. Another thing we needed was to make it easy to contribute to the documentation. We needed that because one way to grow a community around a product is to enable to contribute to more than just the code. And I would like to use this talk also to invite any of you to have a look to our documentation and try to contribute if you like, if you help us. Uh, in many ways because you will grow the doc, but also you will ask questions outside of our comfort zone and you will certainly have a different point of view. So to be honest, we will come any criticism, just please be polite. So back to requirements. Amidst all the content related requirements, we also wanted to be able to adapt the visual theme to Pegasus graphical style. The goal was to make the doc more attractive, then people more inclined to, inclined to contribute, uh, at least it's a wish. And to check if these choices could really help our doc to be more attractive, we needed a way to extract usage statistics. Our favorite tool 
that uh, we always use and we use it we use for our website is Google Analytics. Enabling uh, feedback was also a requirement. Close to statistic, it's usually some common tools, but the goal is more to improve on things user really requested. Also, checking links was a must have too. The tool itself had to provide that, but some help from Google Search Console was possible. Also, an automatic table of content, navigation was a requirement. We had to update table of content manually uh, on the wiki. So in 2019, it's not really something we want to do. Also, as modern language is a bit limited when it comes to complex content like code examples, math formulas, cable shortcuts, and so on. And I heard about Python modern extensions. I really wanted to be able to use them or at least some similar system. Having a dedicated search engine was also something we wanted to provide to our users. In fact, because uh, GitHub engine is nice, but it returns too many things and display findings in modern file as source code. And we can comply because GitHub is made for source code, so uh, that's, it's doing exactly what we expect him to do. And finally, we like the idea of having features like an offline PDF or HTML version of our doc and the ability to use our own domain name and some of the things that GitHub Wiki was not able to provide. So choosing a doc tool chain and process is not easy. We had too many options. One of our requirements that I did not indicate previously was time. We, did, we didn't have much time and no one has, but more than time to put this in place, the time we lacked or that we did not want to allocate was time to maintain this tool chain. This requirement quickly excluded the self-hosted solution, but GitHub Pages too. GitHub Pages is just a hosting and doesn't provide any tools to generate the content. This option will perhaps come back later, but today it's too big option, I don't feel driving that. Also, we are still making experiments. So if we have to trash all work because we choose, we choose the wrong way, I'd rather trash light work than a huge one. Then within the clue hosted tools, we had a few options too. The most obvious one was readthedocs.org that filled almost all the requirements we had. The only exotic aspect of this tool chain is that we decided to use mkdocs instead of Sphinx because of the ease of use and also because I found a material design theme for mkdocs that I really wanted to use. Yes, I admit it's a very light argument, but as I said, we wanted to make the migration as fast as possible, so having a theme where you could just change a few CSS was ideal. So what's the setup we put in place? Uh, let's see what shit to use the base camp. Readthedocs.org is the cloud service we're using. It's free and provides uh, <laughs> it's, it's free, but, uh, but you can donate. Uh, it's a free project, so I really uh, ask you to have a look at it if you, if you didn't already did that. Um, it provides the hosting. It provides the link with GitHub using a webhook. It enables version if you created a tagged release in your repository, and it also supports custom domain names. And Cadax is a Python tool to generate static documentation site from Mardon content. We use it with a material design theme that far more interesting than the default read the docs theme shipped with MKDOX. We're not using the read the doc theme, so it required some adjustment and specifically to display read the docs version box. It's a, a box you can find on the bottom right corner of documentation site where you can switch from one version to the other, and it required some hacking in the, in the theme to do that. We, we installed a bunch of Python markdown extension for highlighting 
handling abbreviation, math formulas, tab code blocks, footnotes, and some more. Writing style guides is also in progress to explain how to contribute technically, but also on the content part. Using the new tools required a few adjustments, of course. Uh, we had some technical writers that were, not so, that were not so technical, and so we had to teach them how to use Git. Um, we had to update all Markdown content we previously generated. We had to update links and syntax to use uh, new extensions. We had to configure and test the system using forked repositories, so we were not working on the real repositories. We had to write a style guide, which is still in process, and we also learned how to review documentation and create PRs, because it was usually developer work. So for me, it was okay, but for uh, uh, technical writers, it was somewhat some new process. We use documentation labels in GitHub and Jira in order to isolate the pure doc PRs and see the doc PRs needing doc, the, the, the code PRs that are needing docs and to is isolate them from the pure code uh, pull request. So what's next? Um, we have this system in place and today we have to finish the contribution guidelines and have contributors reading it. We have to gather enough uh, analytics to tell if pages have to be reworked and if the experiments we try are working or not. We already received and taken into account a lot of feedback, feedbacks that users and contributors are going to send to us. Um, for that, we will probably put a feedback tool like Hotjar in place on the site. We already know that we are going to expand the map where structural and implementation design is not easy to figure for users. There's a huge demand for this. And we also have to use a new system and make it live, see if its limitation, see its limitation and then define the new requirements for the next system. And now here's the map. We have real data, not much, but some of it, and it's growing. We already see the places we have to fix. We can help explorers point telescopes to the right directions. But the most important thing is that we know for real because we have metrics. Then with the camp, we go back home. We rest a bit and show our findings to colleagues. After that, We'll plan the next expedition with a bigger truck and more tools. I don't know what it's going to be, to be honest. Oh, and did you know that Antarctica is the only continent where consensus is not present? As for no, of course. So if you have any questions, remarks, and feedbacks, please. We have still six minutes left. We actually do have time for questions, so yeah. <laughs> Yes? Not yet. Uh, we have only uh, an English version for it. But uh, the tool we use, uh, Read the Docs, is able to uh, handle translation. But I admit, we are first uh, creating the content in English. We, we first have to provide a good basis for content, and then we're going to translate it. Uh, I'm French, so I'm going to help tr translating in French, but I don't know if we have any other, any other people able to translate in other languages. Yep. Uh, do you have the, the code and the documentation code in the same repository as a subdirectory? Yep. Sub in, in fact, it's exactly in the same repository. It's uh, in a slash docs folder at the root of the project. So each time a user um, makes a change on the code, so adding a new feature, changing a behavior, changing a common line feature or something like that, we require him or her to um, change the documentation or at least seed a new documentation page. And then our writers are going to rework this content. Uh, how about the other way around? When you, when you find or fix a bug in the documentation that is not in the code, 
then do you tag the... the uh, what, what do you mean by a bug in the documentation that's not in the code? I don't know, something, documentation that is just wrong for some reason. Yeah, and the code is okay. Right, uh, so do you, do you tag the repository and release a new version? No, we, we just... Um, for, for the moment, I admit it, not, it did not happen. Um, so we, what we are going to do is probably rebuild uh, a tag of the, of the repository, but we are not going to publish a new version of the binaries of the, uh, of the program, for instance. Yeah? For teaching new technical writers how to use Git, how much original content do you create to, to help them learn versus how much do you repurpose from like it, it really depends on the person. Um, some are just learning with uh, five-minute examples, and some never were never learn. So it, it depends. Uh, do you have a preferred resource for it, like in general? Do you have like, no? We, what we do is that we practice per programming. So we practice per writing too. And then we work on the real content and we teach them how to use the tool with using video conference. We use Zoom uh, for video conferences and then we do the work together live and uh, I show them how to use the tool, how to commit, how to push, and things like that. Yep? No, everything is into the same URL. Um, we have um, the co source code in a GitHub repository with slash docs folder on the root of the, the repository. And read the docs uh, is triggered to build this slash docs folder. Each time we push a new content to the master branch, and it creates a new build each time we create a tagged release of the software in this repository. So everything is on the same repository. There's no uh, sub-projects in, uh, in, uh, in um, read the docs or thing like that. Everything is as, I don't know if I answered your, your question exactly. Yeah, we don't have this case, uh, to be honest, but what you could do and what, what the way I would do that is uh, to have uh, ev probably a, a third repository or some GitHub pages and things like that where you would put an, a concatenated version of your documentation. Or if you don't want to do that, uh, I would use sub-projects in um, Read the Docs as a feature to make sub-projects. So on the same URL, you can have uh, different documentation, so you can see that they are um, part of the same thing, but not exactly the same way. You, if you use the same theme and same templates and everything, it, it could be enough, I guess. Well, one of the hard parts of this kind of stuff is uh, just interlink, inter-references to other, other yeah. parts of the documentation. In Sphinx, you've got some extensions to handle more like that. I don't know with MK. Uh, I did not explore things a lot uh, because of this markdown requirement. Um, I know Sphinx does markdown, but um, I clearly don't uh, really know this stuff uh, on Sphinx. The, the best tool we use is includes um, in MKDocs, and perhaps if you work with um, Git Submodules or thing like that, you can achieve the same thing, but it, it's may be, it may be more complicated. And to, to be clear, this setup is because what we are working on is uh, is on the same repository. Um, if we had another project set up, we probably would have used other tools or other way to configure them. Yeah, for the, the, the not so technical writers and so on, do, do they have the ability to? Just uh, compile the documentation on their own machine yeah. without. We, we, it requires. Yeah. So it, it requires. We have a preview system. It requires to install Python on your computer, but it's not a big deal. And uh, then you can just run mkdocs serve on the on the the root folder, and then you can view it in your browser on a localhost uh, address, and it's very handy.
the only thing you don't have is the version che checkbox from MKDocs, but from read the docs, but that's all. We have to wrap up now. We're going to move from uh, Pliny and uh, Pegasus to Kubernetes, more myth. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.